In this video, we will see how to interpret the epsilons and deltas of differential privacy. Recall that a mechanism is epsilon delta differentially private. If for any two databases x and y that differ on one entry, i.e. x minus y in norm 1 is at most 1, and for any subset s of possible responses of the mechanism, we have the probability that m of y is in s is at most e to the epsilon times the probability that m of x is in s plus delta. Then we have the following theorem. The mechanism m is epsilon delta differentially private if and only if for all databases x and y such that the distance between x and y in norm 1 is at most 1, apart from the occurrence of some event bridge that has probability at most delta, m of y will be indistinguishable from an epsilon differentially private response with respect to m of x. I will detail the formal meaning of this cumbersome phrase in a future video, but the takeaway is roughly the following. With high probability 1 minus delta, the probability of any result for database y is never more than a constant factor e to the epsilon times the probability of the result for database x. Roughly, this is a way of guaranteeing that under a high probability event, no attacker will then be able to gain more than e to the epsilon times what he could have gained in expectation had some user in the differentially private database been out of the differentially private database. Now we'll get back to a more precise statement of this other result when we'll get back to the Bayesian interpretation of differential privacy and then when we'll get to the utilitarian interpretation of differential privacy. But importantly, delta measures the probability of some uncontrolled privacy breach, while epsilon is a measure of how much is lost when there is no uncontrolled privacy breach. This is why delta should be exponentially small. It's very important that delta is very, very small. As opposed to this, it is fine if epsilon takes values that are around, let's say, 1. Actually, what matters is not epsilon, but e to the epsilon. This means that values of epsilon that are beyond 2 or 5 are already quite problematic, and values that exceed something like 10 or 14 can be regarded as useless if you have a 14 differentially private mechanism, basically it's not differentially private. And this is because e to the power of 14 is already in the order of the millions.